fragments of scrap metal by customs which were all in breach of a ministerial order. Why Danville was commissioner? Absolutely. Why a current candidate, Danville Walker, was the commissioner of customs. The Jamaica Labour Party is also claiming abolition of cost sharing up to secondary level so that all our children can go to school. What are the facts? Over the last four years, parents have been burdened with higher auxiliary fees and cost of books and materials. As never before. Absolutely. These are only a few examples of the blatant falsehood and misrepresentations contained in the GLP publication and its so-called achievements. And while we have not yet dissected or read in detail their manifesto, I would want to believe that they would have repeated a number of these things in their manifesto. And if that is so, what they would be doing is that they would be compounding lies on top of lies. We do not believe that the people of Jamaica will be fooled by the JLP's misrepresentations and falsehoods. In the final analysis, we believe the people know and their personal situation proves that things are worse under the Jamaica Labour Party government than they were under the People's National Party. For this reason, for their sake, and the sake of the future of their children, we ask Jamaicans to vote for the People's National Party on December the 29th. A vote for the PNP is a vote for a return to responsible economic management, jobs, social progress for the people of Jamaica. And before I conclude, there's just one other thing that I would like to mention. The Jamaica Labour Party has been boasting on platforms and elsewhere about the respect which they have for women. In order to transmit and to show what they are saying, they have been boasting that they have 13 candidates of women and we have five candidates. Well, we are proud to say that we have five candidates, one of whom is the leader of the party, a person in whom we are exceedingly proud. What we would wish for those persons who are listening to the Jamaica Labour Party about the respect which they have for women, to think back over the last four plus years as to how members of the Jamaica Labour Party, including candidates who are now running, have treated our women. We can think of Darrell Vaz, who attacked a journalist in Western Jamaica. A fact. Female journalist. Female journalist. Heavily reported, well known. Let us not be fooled by what he's now saying <laughs> hypocritically about respect for women. We can recall Mr. Warminton and how he treated a female member of the press. Let us not be fooled by their argument about respect for women. We can recall Robert Montague's attack on a female in Portland when he addressed the matron there. So let us not be fooled. We also see this in the context of the vulgar and the slanderous attack by the Jamaica Labour Party and our leader, Portia Simpson Miller. How can they be talking about respect for women when they are promoting the kind of ads that they have been in relation to our leader, who is a woman well regarded in Jamaica, well regarded outside. We note, as I conclude, that we have not heard one word from the Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Not one single word of rebuke of his ministers or of persons now vying to become MPs and how women have been treated by them and we have not heard one word from the Prime Minister as to how our leader has been treated in the context of his speaking about respect for our women. Thank you so much. I don't know whether or not my colleagues, Mark, Julian and Bobby would wish would wish to say anything about it. I I was wondering whether just, just go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. 
regarding the PATH program, which I think the government is playing <coughs> some false claim to. This was implemented by the People's National Party in 2002. And as you know, PATH caters to children up to the age 18 years. Persons with disabilities, the elderly, pregnant, and lactating mothers, as well as the outdoor poor. And when the PNP was leaving office in 07, there were over 200 persons enrolled in the program. 200,000. Uh, yeah, I beg your pardon. Enrolled in the program. Right. Now, um, the Step to Work program, now being implemented by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security was developed by the PNP administration and negotiation was done with the World Bank for the funding of the project. So the JLP is now implementing a project that was developed up to 07, 2007. Just thought that was Sure, yeah. important intervention. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the point should be made that to the extent, Sorry, that, to the extent time, that the so numbers on par have increased yeah. under the JLP, it is only because the numbers of poor yeah. have increased dramatically under the JLP. Hundreds of thousands of additional people are now below the poverty line. Poverty had been reduced under the PNP government. When it took office, the rate of poverty was just under 30%. They reduced it over their 18 years of office to under 10%, 9 point. 6% or thereabouts was a poverty rate. It has now doubled, more or less, in four hard years under the JLP. So it is, it is no wonder that there are more numbers of persons now having to rely on PATH. Yes, Nadine. Nadine? Yes, my question relates to the criticism of the JLP achievement. Yes. Um, it has been said that successive governments usually stop the projects started by the administration that they take over from, and quite a number of these projects have been started, you said have been started by the PNP, but continued by the JLP. What would you say to someone who may say that, well, they, you, you might have secured a deal, you might have started a contract, but the JLP followed through, and so it could be said that they actually built these things, or it ended with them. What would you say? We have absolutely no difficulty with one government continuing we with another hard. project. Yeah. Yeah. We have absolutely none. And if you were to look over the years, there are a number of significant national institutions which different governments have continued with. What we are asking the Jamaica Labour Party to do is just to be honest, yeah. to be open, and to state very clearly what is the truth. You can't publish a document by stating that we have done this, that, that, without stating explicitly that what we have done is that we have built upon it. Where they have identified achievements, they must be truthful and to say exactly where they started because the uninitiated person out there would be of the view that they started this thing or these things from scratch, built them during the 14 years, during the four years, during the four years, and delivered them during the four years. So that person, Nadine, would be correct in asking, what about the issue of continuity? Something which we support. But I would also say to that person that you need to understand continuity within the context of where these started. There are even some projects in it that were started and finished by the People's National Party, yet, what we have is a Jamaica Labour Party that is claiming that they finished it, that is claiming that they built it, and the achievements document is replete with these things. And what we have is a government of nothing but untruth, a government of lies, a government of deceit, and a government that would wish to posit in the minds of people things that they know that they have not done. Mr. Franklin, you have spoken to the yes, issue everyone. of the, the advertisement regarding the, the BNP's president, Portia Simpson Bella. Yes. How she has been painted by the Jamaica Labour Party in that ad. But um, I would like to ask you also in relation to the uh, Manat Christopher Pope issue, yes. whereby the PNP has put out an advertisement 
um, calling on current Prime Minister Andrew Bolton to provide information on where the funds came from to fund the Manic Initiative. The question is, would it, it not be uh, a little bit, um, should I say, unfortunate for you to be asking the new Prime Minister that question, and in fact, it was the previous Prime Minister who was holding who was responsible for that initiative. No, the, the current the Prime Minister, the current Prime Minister was a member of the Cabinet, headed by the previous Prime Minister. And the Central Executive. That, so that, that issue would have been discussed on more than one occasion, as reported by the media, and the current Prime Minister, who was then a member of the Cabinet, and also a member of the Central Executive of the Jamaica Liberal Party, and also the House Leader, yeah. on his feet when many questions yeah. were asked yeah. in Parliament, said not one thing about it, and save and accept, save and accept, in Littis, St. Elizabeth, in the height of a party political presentation, he said, the current Prime Minister said that the previous Prime Minister did nothing wrong. The current Prime Minister, also in Parliament as House Leader, on many occasions blocked questions that were to be asked by the opposition about this particular matter. And he also stated in Parliament that the government of the day did all that they could that was right. And we are saying that the current Prime Minister has everything to do with Manat, the current Prime Minister has everything to do with telling us the truth, and one of the truths which we are asking him to tell us is who paid that $50,000. Yeah. I mean, I would just add, as leader of the Jamaica Labour Party, he has the power and the obligation to report to the nation who funded this massive deposit that was paid to a law firm to lobby against the extradition request of the United States government over a period of nine months. He was very involved in the Jamaica Labour Party at the highest levels throughout this program, and throughout this period. And as a leader, he has the power and indeed the obligation to come clean on it. And we're calling on him to do so without any further delay. David. Yes, David. Mr. Bowling, my question sure. is for you. At the launch of the manifesto a while ago, the GLP said that insolvency laws are being modernized 